it comes to actual legislation from market structures and stable coins to now anti-money laundering and, and a different focus on the Senate side, if you will. What kind of tenor are you picking up in the conversations you're having here? Definitely a different focus on the Senate side, focusing on uh, the banking issues and on um, the personal information and making sure that we have the KYC rules and all of those things are really important. On the House side, we still see a big focus on market structure and stable coin, and we really, really want to see the stable coin legislation get through. We saw an article this morning that McHenry's pushing it through for the end of the year. We would love to see that happen. It's a really important place for us to show leadership in the United States. We already see the European Communion actually come together to create stable coin legislation. We need to do the same here. So talk more about stable coin legislation in particular. What would it do for the industry and how would it start to change things, particularly for the stable coins that have stronger ties to the United States in particular and the dollar? Yeah, well, we really want to see stablecoin legislation here because it'll actually create a standard that we think that the rest of the world will actually follow suit behind. When we actually see that, and we can then leverage these stablecoins, and the U.S. has said, hey, yes, when it comes to U.S. dollar-backed stablecoins or stablecoins generally, here's what you need. You need one-to-one -one backing. You need auditing. You need to hold it in U.S. bank accounts. All of these pieces are really important to create that leadership and then to create this notice to the market that we're open and we're willing to do business on this. So it creates this opportunity for all of these payments use cases that are already leveraging USD assets to be able to say, okay, we're good. We have the opportunity now to continue in the market and to bring even more players into it. So it is a really, really important step from an industry standpoint. But frankly, it's a really important step from a leadership standpoint for the U.S. to show that leadership. I frankly think it is a really the most important piece of legislation to get through first so we can show that here's, our, here's how we look at this. These, we're willing to create standards around this. We want this to be something that the world sees us lead on. Now, there are stable coins and then there are CBDCs. I want to first have us take a listen to New York, former New York Bank, uh, New York Fed President Bill Dudley and Bloomberg opinion columnists on CBDCs in particular. Central bank digital currency should be a pretty significant improvement over cash. It'll be just the safest cash, but, but in terms of the default risk, because it'll be guaranteed by the sovereign nation. Uh, but you don't, don't have worries about storage. You, don't, you can transact with digital cash across you know, long distances. So to me, it's like cash plus. It's so, superior to cash uh, and it's something that, we, that the U.S. should start to innovate on. So it's a big thought. It's a thought a lot of people have had, Danelle, but there has also been a lot of pushback on this idea. What is the likelihood of this conversation moving forward? It does feel like there's a little bit of a shift where there's more interest here in the U.S. to a CBDC. Uh, I think it's um, mild at this point to see the interest there, but I do think that there's been more focus over the last, I'd say, year to six months, six months to a year or something like that. I do think that all the things that he just mentioned, though, are actually uh, they work the same with stable coins that are that are created under licensed and regulated in, 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 uh, companies that actually have issued them. So we can do a lot of that digital dollar outreach and have those things happen and have it be like used globally and have it be really simple. That all can be leveraged with the existing stable coin operators in the U.S. that can do that. And of course, that ties into what you do with Stellar, the cash to crypto conversion, essentially. Speaking of the work you do, Stellar is coming up on the one year anniversary now of Stellar Aid Assist. assist essentially working in Ukraine for humanitarian purposes in regard to funding. How's that going? Are we going to see that potentially expanding to other areas of conflict, like, say, the Middle East? Oh, it's so awesome to have you ask that question. We, we're coming up on a year, I think it's December 15th, where the UNHCR, so the United Nations High Commission on Refugees, has actually started delivering aid into Ukraine. They've done it now. They're doing it sometimes weekly in terms of the aid delivery. It's really wonderful to see the work that they've done. They're contemplating leveraging this in other countries, so outside of Ukraine. So it is really awesome to see the tools being leveraged for good. And I really want the world to see that this is exactly what blockchain technology can do. Stellar does it really well, but lots of blockchains out there do it too. So instead of focusing on the bad side of things that can happen, like well, let's focus on what's actually the utility and the good stuff that's going on. Danelle Dixon of the Stellar Development Foundation, we thank you for your time.